Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at The Outer Worlds, developed by Obsidian and published by Private Division. So as you guys probably know, Obsidian are the people behind Fallout New Vegas and some of the people that did work on this game also worked on the very very original Fallout. However obviously if you do like Fallout New Vegas you are pretty much going to enjoy this game. I wouldn't say that this feels like a spiritual successor, but you can definitely tell that it has some of the DNA in it. And you know, it kind of falls into that first person shooter RPG genre, kind of where Borderlands is, though it definitely feels a lot more towards the Fallout side than something like Borderlands. And dare I say, it also kind of has a bit of Bioshock in it for some reason. I think it's mainly just how weird some of the enemies are, or the gun designs and character designs, definitely some... Bioshock in there somewhere as well. So in the Outer Worlds you play as a character that's been in cryostasis for quite a long time, more than he should have been, the ship kind of went astray, and then you get saved by another guy, and really, you know, stuff happens, the story's actually pretty good, but I don't really want to spoil anything, it is a good story, but basically you're free to do pretty much whatever you want from the start, you can actually visit whatever planet or well, at least 90% of the planets pretty much from the get-go. Obviously some of the planets will be a bit higher level, but you can technically go there. It's definitely a, you know, a free game. It's not like a massive open world like Fallout for instance, but it's more of like each planet's a littler area, but you know, it's practically a free roam open world game, uh, just in little uh, smaller sections that are divided by planets more than anything. Now my favourite part about this game, and this is also the same thing that probably puts it more towards the Fallout side of things or the Skyrim side of things more than like the Borderlands side of things, is just how much choice you have in this game. Mainly this is thanks to the dialogue. Now you can practically probably get through this game without barely killing anybody if you've got the right stats or you could you know go on a murder spree and pretty much kill everybody. So because this is an RPG, you get stacks like Intimidation or other stats like Charm and stuff like this. And with these stats, you can kind of get out of tight situations or do stuff like intimidate somebody and pretty much skip a whole mission altogether. And there are a lot of choices in this game and pretty important ones. Like right from the get go, you have to do a pretty important choice on the first mission. And at the start I thought it was a choice that was going to be easy to make, but then you kind of get to like know both sides of the story and you really are kind of, you know, thinking about it for quite a while. And the cool thing is that even if you do go with one side more than the other, there's actually multiple outcomes with both sides. So maybe you decide to go with one NPC, but that NPC also has different outcomes within that decision. There's just generally a lot of choices and uh, dialogue can change a lot of things. Sometimes there's a side quest that if you intimidate somebody, you can basically get whatever you're looking for off of them without going to the other end of the map and then coming back. And it's just really, really cool. Obviously then there's consequences like that NPC won't get along with you. He may not sell anything more to you through, through the game. And it's just really, really cool and it makes you think quite a lot. Now we said that you can pretty much get through this game without killing anybody but I'm sure everybody here is going to kill multiple things so let's talk a bit about the battle system. Now the battle system is pretty simple when it comes to gameplay, you know, you kind of have a normal first person shooter experience, obviously you get the numbers representing the health and stuff like an RPG game. The Gunplay is quite smooth. I wouldn't say it's quite as smooth as Borderlands. It's more on the Fallout side, maybe a tiny bit more rusty. But, you know, it feels okay. It feels nice. You also get this, like, ability to slow down time, which is kind of interesting. Uh, enemies can then have different weak spots. It's not kind of like where, where Fallout, where you kind of have a percentages. You still have to aim. It just simply slows down time. Then we obviously have multiple different types of weapons. We have like snipers, shotguns, we even have a load of melee weapons. Personally, actually my favorite weapon in the game is one of the unique melee weapons. I really do enjoy it. And then these weapons can like scale with different stats that you upgraded. And yeah, nothing too complicated as far as combat goes. Obviously, because we are exploring multiple planets, we're gonna come across everything from like robots, humans, 
weird plant alien creatures. There's definitely a really wide variety of enemies. Now as far as exploration goes this is actually probably one of its weaker points like we said it's not a massive kind of one big area it's more little areas on different planets and because they are quite little there's not a huge amount of exploration to do. Sure they'll probably hide like some loot boxes in random places that you probably don't expect it but as far as like unique weapons there are a few but most of them are from like stuff like side quests you're never or like, it's not never but like rarely gonna go into like a secret area and then say oh cool I've just found this uh, amazing weapon. Like I said there are a few hidden weapons but Definitely one of the weaker sides of this game is the exploration. Now like we said this is an RPG game so leveling up stats and stuff like that is incredibly important and probably even more important than in a lot of other RPGs because some stats allow you to do the most basic thing. Like if you don't level up a certain stat you won't even be able to sell items at vending machines. If you don't level up a different stat you won't be able to upgrade weapons. So you really do need to decide what stats to upgrade even to do the most basic things. And I think it's quite important, it's very important to, uh, you know, look at what kind of build you're going for. The good thing is that you can respec your stats for uh, a certain price of money, which is kind of interesting because I'm sure in this type of game, everybody's going to screw up the first time and they're going to want to try something new. Obviously, you also have stats like hacking and stuff like that, like in the Fallout games. However, the good thing, or at least in my opinion, it's a good thing, Sure, you need hacking levels to get through certain doors, but there's no stupid mini game. It's just if you've got the level, you go through the door, and if you don't, well, you don't go through the door. And I really appreciate that because some of the mini games for hacking in the Fallout games were just not my cup of tea, let's just say. And just like most RPGs, you've got a character creator. It's not a great character creator, but it's okay, you know. And then you can choose which helmet or uh, armor piece to have on. And the cool thing is that you can take two companions with you on uh, on your adventure. Every time you leave your ship, you get to choose which two you want. And it's really cool in the way that apart from being able to give them whatever weapon you want to give them or give them whatever armor set you want to give them, they actually it kind of feels like they actually kind of get to know each other. They have conversations with each other. And it's not completely random. Like, I had two separate companions coming out and one of them mentioned kind of a recipe that he should try and then like next time I had those two or those same two companions he said oh yeah I've tried your recipe or whatever and each companion kind of has a different personality like I don't think that specific conversation could have been had with any other two companions and it doesn't feel like random dialogue like in a lot of other games in this genre and I think that's really really cool. And really I think all we've got more to say about this is the graphics thankfully they are using Unreal Engine 4 which is really nice for this type of game. <clears throat> Bethesda. And well, yeah, I think for me it's going to be an 8.5 out of 10. If you enjoyed any of the Fallout games, more specifically New Vegas, you're going to like this one even more. So I definitely recommend picking this one up if you are into this genre. So yeah, guys, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please go like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.